Globe Show. With Francis Langford, Jerry Colonna, Vera Vague, and Skinny Ennis and his orchestra. And now here he is, the star of the show, Bob Hope. Production by Cap, Staff, and Davis. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Bob, United States Naval Training Center, Sampson, New York, Hope. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, here I am at the Sampson Naval Training Center. That's a big place where they send boots and spend six weeks lacing them up tighter. <laughs> a boot, that's a tar that can't go too far. Samson is located on Seneca Lake. That's one of the Finger Lakes. Samson, that's the hangnail. <laughs> and, and the wind really blows across this lake. I don't know how strong it gets, but this morning, Skinny Ennis arrived three times. And these fellas at Samson are from all over the country. I could tell from the different ways they greeted me when I arrived. One bunch of fellas from the South yelled, Hi, y'all. Another bunch from Boston said, Greetings, old chap. And then there was a group from the Bronx. And they're very strict here. Whenever they inspect the barracks, even the termites have to come out and salute. And yes, sir, and you should see these Navy haircuts. Old skinheads, a Navy haircut. That's a decapitation that's trying to get ahead in the world. I won't say they cut all the hair off these boys' heads, but this is the only place in the world where the billiard balls sneer at the players. And somebody asked me if these sailors get much liberty or not. All I know is the state pen is just 30 miles from here, and on a quiet night, these boys can hear the life termers sneering at them. I came up here by way of Buffalo. It's a lot better than taking the train. And I did, uh... I did come up here on the train. I'm not saying it was old, but every three miles I had to stop the train while the fireman got off and chop more wood for the engine. I asked... I asked the conductor why they couldn't get the train to go any faster than 15 miles an hour, and he said, we'll do better the next stop. We're putting on an engine there. It was so slow, I jumped off and mailed a letter to California and had an answer waiting for me in the next town. <laughs> I can't say how slow the train was, but when we pulled into Geneva, Paul Revere jumped out and yelled, The British are coming! The British are coming! She smiled at me in my dreams last night My dreams are getting better all the time And what do you know, she looked at me in a different light My dreams are getting better all the time You think that we were strangers a couple of nights ago And though it's a dream, I never dreamed she'd ever say hello Or maybe tonight I'll hold her tight when the moon be shine My dreams are getting better all the time
think that we were strangers a couple of nights ago. And though it's a dream, I never dreamed that she'd ever say hello. Or maybe tonight I'll hold her tight when the moon be shine. My dreams are getting better all the time. This is Samson. Well, hiya, Sam. What do you hear from Delilah? <laughs> well, who is this? It is me. Kelowna, it is I. It is he. It is she. It is they. It is we. You've got quite a mob over there, haven't you? <laughs> Professor, why aren't you over here? I think I'm lost in the mountains, Hope. I'm up here in the kitten skills. You're in the kitten skills? Yes, yeah, some of the smaller cat skills. <laughs> well, quit, quit, quit climbing, Kelowna. Where are you? Geneva. Who are you with? Genevieve. <laughs> Why? Eager Beaver. <laughs> Kelowna, I'm going to put you in a room and give you a gun with one bullet in it. Then I'll come back in a half an hour. You know what to do, don't you? Yes. What? Wait for you to open the door. <laughs> Professor, I suppose you've been over to Cornell and seen Lake Cayuga. Seen what? Cayuga, Cayuga, Cayuga. Okay, stop honking. I'll pull over. <laughs> Kelowna, how did your brain get so twisted? Stood up under an electric fan. What's your story? <laughs> I, uh, I don't like to mention these matters, Hope, but I'm really at the Auburn State Penitentiary. The State Penitentiary? Yes, Hope. The case comes up in the morning. What are you in for? I was playing catch with a girl's softball team. And what happened? Caught one that complained. Kelowna, stop kidding. What are you really doing at the state pen? Well, Hope, I hate to tell you this, but I just shot my mother's only son. Kelowna, you just shot your mother's only son. That's you. It is? Yes. <laughs> and I thought I was born with this hole in my head. <laughs> tell me one thing, Kelowna. What's happening with that bat in your belfry? With that bat in my belfry? Just a minute, Hope. I'll find out. <laughs> what was that? What do you know? Belfry hit a home run. gentlemen, Major Meredith Wilson has written a fine song about a fine state, his home state. And here's Francis Langford to tell you all about it. I wait. It's a beautiful name when you say it like we say it back home. It's the robin in the willow. It's the postmaster's friendly hello. I'll wait. It's a beautiful name. You'll remember it wherever you roam. It's the summer in September. It's the squeak of your shoes in the snow. It's the Sunday school and the old river band songs on the porch after dark. It's the corner store and a penny to spend, you and your girl in the park. I'll wait. It's a beautiful name when you say it like. We say it back home It's a promise For tomorrow And a memory of long, long ago I'll wait I'll wait It's a beautiful name When, when you say it like we said it back home, back home. It's the robin It's the robin in the willow. Yeah, on the willow. Say, Paul. Yeah, Ma. Just say, Paul. We were married 84 years ago. Yep, yeah, that was in 1861, the year of the big wind. That's right, the year when the house blew into the cellar. Uh-huh. Cozy down here, ain't it? <laughs> Robert, I wish you'd stop rocking that chair. Ma, that ain't no chair. That's me. 
It's no use talking, Pa. You're getting old. You ain't even see well anymore. I can't see well. I can see well enough to do the milking every night, can't I? Well, I ain't told you, Pa. But for the last three years, you've been a milking the cats. <laughs> yeah, Ma, I've been having lots of trouble. This morning when I was out in the cornfield, I lost my heating pad. You lost your heating pad in the cornfield? Yep, and it popped four acres before I found it. <laughs> Rheumatiz. Rheumatiz, still fighting it out with my arthritis. Who's winning? My lumbago. You know, sometimes I wish I'd married a younger man, like Herman Beezlebub. <laughs> you mean old Beezle? Oh, yeah. Yes. He was waiting at the church for me when we were married, and he said he'd always wait. Yeah, makes a handy hitching post on Sunday morning. You thought <laughs> Oh, I forgot, Ma. Here, here's a letter for you. It's from Elmer and Boot Camp. Well, how much? <laughs> Our son writes he's having a wonderful time at Boot Camp, Pa. He says he loafs around all day in a beautiful barracks and then spends his evenings in Virginia, Geneva talking to the thousands of gorgeous girls there. <laughs> Elmer wrote that in his letter. Say, that's peculiar. Oh, what's peculiar? Well, I didn't know you could get malaria so far north. (laughs) He's at Samson Boot Camp. What's Samson Boot Camp, Paul? Well, remember my brother that got sent up the river? Yeah. Well, it's the same thing, but Elmer's further up. (laughs) Gosh, Paul, he writes he got a pass and he's coming home today. Gosh, Ma, that must be Elmer now. I'll open the door. Hiya, folks. Well, here I am. How do I look? Can't tell, son. You're standing in the shadow of the flagpole. (laughs) Goodness, son, I'm so happy to see you. I gotta give you a kiss. Ma, put down that mop panel. I'm over here. (laughs) Well, son, how's boot camp? Oh, it's just like Iowa, only more of it. Well, gosh, son, it's nice to see you. You're a chip off the old block. Yes, sir, you're the spitting image of me when I was your age. Oh, he just got home. This ain't no time for insults. <laughs> well, well, what's new, son? Well, I'm a, I'm a gunner's mate now, Ma. A gunner's mate? Well, land sakes, I didn't even know you were thinking of getting married. <laughs> I'm sure mighty proud of you. You're mighty brave about being wounded in battle. Pa, I ain't been wounded in battle. Everybody here at Samson has to get this kind of a haircut. (laughs) Oh, Pa, let's get to the surprise. All right, son, I know you only got a couple of days leave and you probably want to get right to bed and sleep, but first, me and Ma have a little present. Tain't much. We're just old-fashioned folks. Open the closet and show him his present, Pa. Well, here I am, big boy. Do you like me? This probably never happened, fellas, but it's a good idea. <laughs> oh, a girl. Oh, shucks. Why didn't you get me a good book? <laughs> Why didn't we get you a good book? Yeah. Oh! For your lives, it's Kelowna. Oh, once there was a little girl who lives next to me. And she loved a sailor boy. I was only three. Now I'm on a battleship in my sailor suit. Just a great big sailor man, but I'm just as cute. I'm her 
Keep happy of the poop deck, coat of navy blue. She's my little anchor, I'm her tanker too. Now while the girlies pass me by, but I don't care at all. She's my little red bar, and I'm her little yarl. The reason why I think that she is so sublime, she thinks my mustache is too, too divine. Weather's clear. We take out our schooners and fill them full of beer. I promised we'd get married, and I put out to sea. But come the fall, she bought a yawl and took out after me. I fired a friendly salvo, but she returned the blast right between the forward hatch and the mizzen mast. I was on the top deck as she came along, trying to get a native girl to sell me her sarong. I'll give you one guess. What was my reward? long ago. Now everything is fine. We have some little sailor lads, as I remember, nine. When this war is over, we'll sail the ocean blue. With all our little skippers making up the crew. We'll sit up on the poop a deck enjoying peace of mind. They'll be trailing in our wake their dinghies out behind. If I look bowling at a glass, you must blame it upon my stand. Folks, while Bob's entertaining at the Samson Naval Training Center, he decides to visit Niagara Falls, and we find him and Francis waiting for the excursion boat. Where did you say we were going, Bob? Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls? Yeah, that's sort of a boot camp for Tommy Manville's. <laughs> say, Francis, everybody's laughing at us. I guess they must think we're newlyweds, huh? No, Bob. Then what are they all snickering for? I look like a bride going on her honeymoon with her father along. <laughs> say... Say, hey, Bob, hey. Bing Crosby went to Niagara Falls and he got married, didn't he? Don't be silly, Francis. When Crosby got married, Niagara Falls was just a leak in somebody's hot water bottle. <laughs> hey, look, there's the excursion boat now. I'll signal it. Ahoy! 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 Stubborn son of a gun, isn't he? <laughs> Professor Colonna, so you're the captain of the boat now. Ah, yes, James Colonna, dauntless sailor, fearless navigator, and world's foremost charter of dangerous sea lanes, G.J.G. P.S., <laughs> also being smuggled out of Samson Sheep. Well, Colonna, how are we going to get on board? You'll have to climb up the Jacob's Ladder. Okay, Colonna, here I come up the Jacob's Ladder. <laughs> Colonna, what happened? <laughs> uh, that Jake, I told him to join the union. <laughs> to take your cruise. Do you think you could squeeze me in? Well, I, I don't know. You look pretty well squeezed in already. <laughs> Say, I don't think you're much of a sailor, Colonna. What would you do in case of a riptide? Get some thread and sew it back up. <laughs> <laughs> Professor, have a care. No, thanks. I never eat between meals. <laughs> Colonna, this is ridiculous. Where's your bosun's mate? Home with the bosun's kids. Tell me, Professor, do you have any hallucinations? No, but I can slip you a Chesterfield. <laughs> Come on, Hope, I'll show you the boat. All right. Clona, well, what's behind that door? Well, confidentially, Hope, I've been smuggling a few things into the sailors at Sampson from Canada. Clona, what's behind that door? What are you smuggling into the sailors? Oh, just some shoes, Hope, just some shoes. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm going to open that door and see. <laughs> Squeaky, aren't they? <laughs> uh, fight me while I shake up the crew, Hope. I've asked you, lovers. I've asked you, lovers. Colonna, what are you so mad about? I've asked them three times. What are the answer? <laughs> Come on, Professor. Let's.
let's get started. Okay, here we go. Shallow Lake, isn't it? I'll head for Niagara Falls, Hope. Niagara Falls, Kelowna, there's 200 miles of dry land between here and Niagara Falls. How are you going to get the boat over it? Simple, Hope. Watch what happens when I press this little button. Those Boeing people give wonderful service, don't they? Let me take the wheel and steer the boat into shore, Kelowna. Okay, I'll tell you what to do, Hope. First, port your helm. Port helm. Now starboard. Now larboard. Starboard, larboard. <laughs> Reverse engines. Reverse engines. Now half speed ahead. <laughs> Good. Now swim ashore. Yeah. <laughs> Let's look around the falls, Francis. Say there's a sign that says guide service. I'll knock on the door. Yeah, Mr. Hall. Well, Miss Vera Bay. <laughs> well, Vera Bay got wilted cookies. <laughs> oh, Bob Hope, the man with the tilted hooky. <laughs> So you're at Niagara Falls, Miss Bay. Yes. Tell me, do a lot of sailors come here? Well, of course. I was out with a sailor last night. Did you show him the falls? Well, not all of them. Just my hammerlock and half Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't care. I'm not discouraged. I know that someday my Mr. Wright will come along. Well, tell me, Miss Vague, who do you think your Mr. Wright will be? Well, goodness, anybody that's left. <laughs> <laughs> Have you, haven't you any prospects, Miss Vay? Well, I tell you, I went to a wedding last night, Mr. Hope, and when the bride threw her bouquet away, I caught it. And you know what that means, Miss Hope. Yes, you're three years behind the plate for the Yankees. Sure came in handy. <laughs> oh, you dear boy. The knot, Mr. Hope. I'm sure we'd make a lovely bride and goon. <laughs> oh, uh, the things that happened to me, Mr. Hope. You know, the other day I met a naval trainee who kisses like he's blowing a bugle. A Samson trainee who kisses like he's blowing a bugle? Well, how do you know? Oh, I went on a toot with a boot. <laughs> Well, tell me one thing, Miss Vade. Do you yes. think it's possible to live on love? Well, I don't know, but it sounds like a marvelous sort of allotment. <laughs> Where are you staying, Miss Vade? You living in one of the hotels here? Uh, no, 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 Miss Hope. I'm staying in one of the caves behind the falls. Oh, but Miss Vade, that's dangerous. There are a lot of grizzly bears around here. One of them is liable to walk into the cave and hug you to death. Yes, I know, and I have a year's lease too. <laughs> Well, tell me, Miss Vague, what would you do if you were alone in a big cave with 10,000 sailors? I'd grab a shovel or something. You'd grab a shovel? Of course. How else could I fill in the entrance? <laughs> Quick, Hope. Hope, get in my boat. The cops are after me. The cops are after you? What for, Kelowna? I don't know. I think they wanted to sell me some tickets to the policeman's ball. Goodness, what's happening here? Miss Vague, Professor Kelowna is a notorious smuggler. He is! Miss Vague, get away from him. I told you he's a smuggler. Goodness, I thought you said snuggler. <laughs> Rick, oh, run. All right. All right. Come on, you guys. Reach. Do you hear me? Reach. Oh, yeah? What if we don't want to? Oh, come on, fellas. I don't get these parts every week. <laughs> All right. I'm two gun in this to the FBI. You're still two gun. Go ahead, knock it, kid. <laughs> Must be there somewhere. <laughs> No false moves now. I represent the law. I am the law. From law A to law Z. Law Z. Boy's got quite a southern accent, hasn't he? Let's run for it, Hope. Stop or I'll shoot. I'm not afraid of you, bud. I'm on to the teeth. I tell you, I'm on to the teeth. Well, I'm... I'm on to the gums. <laughs> Get in the boat. Okay. You want surrender, huh? Well, I'll fill your boat full of holes. All right. Everybody in the lifeboats. All right. We're in. I think one of us should get out and let it down. Oh! 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 
they got me. Oh, this is it. I'm done for. Tell everybody goodbye. Kelowna, tell them I died like a man. Tell them to keep seeing the princess and the pirate now playing at your neighborhood theater. <laughs> tell them to keep buying I never left home. I'd sail in all bookstores. Tell them that... Uh, tell them that... Tell them... What do you know? Shot him right through his Swift's premium label. <laughs> Here comes Francis Langford, making believe. Francis Langford, yeah. Ever gonna shine to that moon? Everlana ain't the bother by the bobble it's too. Tell me, tell me how long you're gonna keep the lady in the day. Don't you reckon it's wrong? Try swim with a for his way. Everlana won't you pay a little mind to me too? Wake up, wake up, here's his feather through his back. What's the use of smelling watermelon, swing into another fellow's back? Evelina, won't you roll off that tiny and be mine? Radio service. Wake up, wake up. Dear, this savage food is fine. But what's the use of smelling watermelon? 
clinging to another fellow's back. Every line that won't you roll off, roll off that vine and divide. 